Okay. Hello, here's Sibel Ozer interviewing today. Sylvia Peters, um, trying to get get to know some of the Turkish women in our community. So the first thing I notice is we're dressed differently, Sylvia. It's clearly colder where I am. <laughs> Yes, like uh, yeah, I'm in Turkey and it's quite warm here, uh, so I cannot tell you in Fahrenheit, but in Celsius it was like uh, 28 today. Oh, nice. Uh, so you're on vacation? Yeah, well, let's not call it vacation, but visiting family, mm -hmm. family and friends, despite Corona, you know. So. And what part of your family is still there? Well, um, my I have uh, here. I have one sister and one brother. I have aunts and uncles, and you know, cousins, and uh, everybody is here. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. So let's start a little bit talking about your childhood, where you were born, uh, and some of the places you've traveled. I think your life is so interesting with the places that you've been and then ultimately ending in the uh, in Michigan in the US. So uh, take us a little <laughs> bit on the yeah. journey of your many travels. Yeah, well, yes, you're right. It's, uh, uh, I had a kind of uh, interesting uh, development in my life. Uh, and originally we are from Artvin, in the Black Sea area, Artvin, border of uh, Batum, mm -hmm. um, Georgia, you know, in Russian border. Mm -hmm. And my grandparents are from Batum, in fact, Batumi, as they call it. Mm -hmm. And they moved to Artvin, and my parents moved to Adapazaru when I was only one year old. And till 10 years old, I was in Adapazaru, in a, in a village uh, with cows and dogs and cats and chickens. So we were poor, but I was so happy because I think for, um, well, we were not starving uh, for sure. We, we could eat not too well, but we were not hungry. We used to, to eat a lot of uh, tarhana <laughs> in winter. <laughs> and, and also, in fact, mostly tarhana and bread in winter. Mm -hmm. and in summer, we had a lot of veggies. And we had, uh, we had uh, chickens, but it was like luxurious to eat chicken, you know, because uh, mom would sell the eggs and get other necessity for the house, you know, like soap, uh, rice, and you know, other things. And uh, so, and uh, we had beans also in some in winter. We had like dry beans, but also beans she would sell uh, for other needs. So mm -hmm. sometimes we had tea beans, and beans were also like some kind of luxury <laughs> food, and. Um, so yeah, uh, tarhana. She would do tarhana in and prepare tarhana in uh, in summer, and that was uh, the the soup we ate a lot with bread. Of course, sometimes we had eggs, but it was also something like exceptional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but but happy happy childhood, very happy. I would say when I look back. If you ask me where I was the most happy, the most happiest time. Uh, of my life, I would say, at the Pazaru, uh, when I was a little girl, you know, see? And this period, in fact, taught me something when I, so the person I am now, uh, I think I owe a lot to this period of my life. Uh, it taught me so much saying like, uh, happiness is not linked with, um, what you own or with the financial means mm -hmm. because we didn't have much like i'm telling you we ate, we were like eating tarhana <laughs> every day and my brother had even a song tarana tarhar boz tar you know because he was like again tarhana <laughs> Um, yeah, and then 
later I realized hey, hey, before you move me. on uh, I'm I want to ask you uh, could you say a little bit more about uh, so what what did bring about the happiness as far as you can tell what was the source of your happiness then yeah really in, in, yeah, I mean, in, well, I mean because first we were all uh, we are all together, all siblings, and we had really good connection between us. So, of course, also in France, we will have to, I will explain your, our move to France later. Uh, but um, my parents were with us, and we had animals. It was green. It was, we, were, we were in the field. We were running in the field. We were free, you know, like free child. You could make noise, you could jump, you, uh, you didn't have neighbors who were disturbed. Or, because you will, ex you will understand when we are in France, we are in an apartment, so it's completely different. You know? mm -hmm. So I had a dog, Karabash was his name. We had many cats mm -hmm. and, and ducks and, and chickens. And we had like, um, I don't know, and, and our, our cow was like, a, <laughs> and yeah, you, you know, it was like the, we were part of these um, animals, and they were part of our life. You know, like we were their friend, we were our friend, or kind of like this. We, and uh, what else do you need when you are a little girl? You know, uh, I I was uh, not a very like princess kind of girl. I was like dirty one. You know, I love to. To, to play in the mud and, you know, to, to go on the, you know, to run in the fields. And, you know, I was very happy there. I felt so always very free, free, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, and then I had also, like, friends, you know, like little girls like me. I was playing mostly with, with boys uh, because I had three uh, brothers. And maybe even today, I have a good connection with men because I am so used to be with boys and men. And uh, and I, my dad loved me a lot. You know, I was his princess because he had three boys, and they were not so easy boys. So then I came as a little girl. He he, he adored me. He always called me princess, and uh, which I thought later is not good to call the little girl prince. Because they really believe in it, and then later they marry, you know, <laughs> not with the men you married first. Um, so, um, and mom would always say, Princess, not at all. Look at her, she had hair all over. Uh, I was not like, uh, you know, well educated little girl, and I was like a little boy. I was mm -hmm. on the trees, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, when so I yeah, was- different there, definition of a princess. Your definition and yes. sense of a princess was a wild, little wild woman. Yeah. And my dad, my, my dad would always say, always say I, I, you know the funny thing, I thought, and we had like, a, my dad in his uh, free time, he would cut hair, he was not a hairdresser, but he could, do you know like cutting hair for uh, for the village guys and we had a mirror which was like uh, something luxurious too because in the village and i'm talking about uh, like old times we not there was not so many mirrors so having a big mirror it was like wow something exceptional too you know now we have mirror everywhere but mm -hmm. and um, i would look to the mirror because when my dad would say my little princess. Then I would go and look to the mirror and, oh yes, I think I am a princess. You know, with the mud everywhere, the hair completely, uh, you know, <laughs> and all the, <laughs> all the sense. And um, you know, the funny thing, I would look to the mirror and I would really see a princess, like nicely dressed, like clean, no, not muddy, you know, and I would always say, I wish I was in the mirror because the girl in the mirror is so beautiful. <laughs> it's so funny. It was, I think I had a very good imagination. Mm -hmm. I could uh, see this in the, like, like, it's the same person in, the, in reality, but I knew it's the same, but I was like, 
oh, in the mirror, it looks better. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, that uh, happiness was to be in the nature, to be with animals, uh, to be not like limited, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because I was, I will understand better when I will tell you my life in France and of the, how different it was. How so uh, we had a big house. How old were Sorry? you when you went to France or did France you know more about your childhood in Turkey? Yeah, I mean, I was 10 years old when we moved to France. So and from 10 to 10. Did come about? Yeah, we moved to France because uh, my father um, he, he immigrated there. First, my father went to France to work. He was um, working in construction, you know. He was like, a, yeah, I don't know. The name. He was like working, doing everything in, for construction. And uh, a year later, he, we, he took us with him to France. So from this, we had like a big land uh, in Turkey with a nice house and mom loved gardening and we had like a lot of roses. She would do roses, wa water and, uh, and jam with roses. And in summer, like the house was smelling rose and flowers. We had flowers all over the garden, you know, it was beautiful. And so we moved to France. It was the first time uh, I went to Istanbul. The first time I saw like big buildings. Uh, first time I took a, a plane. And uh, first, so we arrived to Paris, like oh, a lot of cars and big buildings, you know. Uh, it was frightening for me. And I was like, where are greens? Where are trees? Where are animals? Mm -hmm. uh, because I'm still little, you know. I, of course, read books, uh, I love to read, but it was like, uh, it's a book. Uh, and uh, uh, we, I was in the countryside and the village was not that big. <laughs> there was no big, no, there was a highest building was like four, four floor only. So I got to Istanbul, it was like, oh my gosh, so high here. And then I arrived in Paris, ah, oh, it was again a big shock. So, from this little garden and little house, we, we arrived to France and it was like a small apartment on ninth floor. Nine, you know, we had, it's the first time I saw an elevator. I never had an idea how, how it feels to be in an elevator. So, and, uh, and then you, you had to be quiet because you had neighbors. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the apartment was small. There was no, and at first I looked from the garden, from the window, I saw, oh, a lot of grain, a lot of, uh, so I ran down and then said, no, don't, and then there was like, don't walk on the, the grass, you know, forbidden to touch the flowers. <laughs> you know, it, it was, I want, to, oh, beautiful flowers. It was not that I want to harm the flowers, but I wanted to collect some of them, bring in the house, put in the you know in the way because like in a, in a countryside, like you go to the field, you see flowers, wild flowers, you collect them, you you bring home, um, and also uh, I had uh, like zero French, zero. You know, you arrive in a country where you don't understand a word. It was terrible, and um, I, so. The first day at school was like, I don't understand a word. And everybody was like telling me something, repeating me a, a sentence. I was like, what is, what do they want from me? And the, the sentence was, Comment tu t'appelles? Comment tu t'appelles? I'm like, okay, maybe I should ask them the same. Then I, I repeated, Comment tu t'appelles? And they told me, like, Christine, I understood is the name. Then, Comment tu t'appelles? Sylvie. But uh, I should never have asked this question because then they thought I'm not talking because I'm shy. Uh, because I answered one, you know, when I say Sylvie, uh, there was like many questions, many, many. And I was like, I didn't even know how to say I don't speak French. I didn't even have teachers helping at all. 
No, I mean, because, you know, it was a beginning of this immigration time and nobody was really prepared to receive all these immigrants. And the teachers, they only speak French and I could not explain that I don't speak, you know. And then the first thing I learned, je ne parle pas français. That was the first thing. I thought I need to tell somebody that I cannot talk. Mm -hmm. Because when I said my name, as I thought, I am shy, that's it, you know, that I can't speak. Then I, uh, I said, ah, je ne parle pas français, je ne parle pas français. That was uh, my, my uh, the first. Comment tu t'appelles? And je ne parle pas français. <laughs> uh, well, it was a really hard time for me. When I, if you ask me the most difficult time of my life, I would say between uh, 10 and 12, you know. So you were three years only? No, I was at 15 years, 15. Oh, 15. Uh, but the two years was like very hard because I could not communicate, uh, you know, really well. I didn't have friends and uh, I had to adjust my myself to living in an in a apartment, you know, in a condominium, how they call it in US, like a small apartment, 80 square meter, you know, yeah. I'm coming from a big, a house and animals. I was missing my um, my lambs. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like so so. Uh, I was always dreaming. I am in the countryside in this village, and I'm ra running in the field. You know, uh, yeah. It was like it's missing so much Turkey. But Turkey was for me the country. I mean, the the little village I was coming from. Right. So my guess is typically children uh, adjust quicker even to change in life, but because yours was so incredibly drastic and there was no real um, preparation, there was no real ceremony of your leaving or being welcomed, that probably your adjustment was quite a bit harder because there yeah, was... Yeah, also, yeah, exactly. Uh, is also maybe my personality also, you know, because I felt so, um, I was so, I loved the animals, you know, I felt so close to them and uh, I love the nature. I love to play outside and I was like very extrovert girl. I liked having a lot of friends, but then um, the problem is you arrive to this, country first uh, the country also is not prepared to welcome you but uh also you face racism you know mm -hmm. uh, i felt i felt lo i faced a lot of racism between this so this short time of this two years because the kids were like bad to me you know like they were pushing me beating me because I don't speak, I cannot talk. And they treated me like I'm a stupid one, you know, because in class I cannot read. Imagine I could read in Turkey and I was a good student and I arrived there zero, you know, I can because French, reading French is difficult. And I was like reading in Turkey is phonetic, you know, auto, o, T, O, you know, auto. Then you arrive in France and they write A, U, T, O, and then what is this AU? Mm. And that's, a, that's the easiest one. Mm. For example, Kaye was like uh, C A C H, you know, like what all this? And then you re read it Kaye. And then, so uh, sometimes the C you read uh, is like K, and sometimes it's sh So I was like so confused. The same uh, letter was like, we, uh, you could read it differently according to the, uh, the also one next to it, you know. It's, it's almost unimaginable to us the way we raised our children. We prepare them so much for even the minutest change in life that they're going to experience. And it sounds like there was f oh, no support for you. Yeah, yeah, zero support. And the teachers also. So I... Uh, uh, I was lucky like this because I was lucky in a way I mean uh, because my uh, my uh, I was elementary school and the t so first they put me in a class I don't understand a word 
Imagine all the sittings there, you don't understand. The only thing I could understand, it was a mat, because you know, one <laughs> class one is two everywhere. But uh, even this, the way they were doing the division, you know, it was a bit different. Mm -hmm. Like putting one here and one there, and you know, it was like different from Turkey. Mm -hmm. But the result was always good. So I, I was so happy when I saw Matt. Oh, wow, I can do that. All day long, I was like sleeping, you know, history and reading, you know, nothing. It was terrible. And um, nobody was helping, nobody was hearing me. Like, can you help me? I cannot read. And, there, and then she was, uh, the teacher was pregnant, she left and another teacher came and she was from, uh, she used, uh, she came from Yugoslavia. I mean, like when they were, the parents were from Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. And she understood uh, I need help. Mm -hmm. So she was like uh, taking uh, like uh, pictures and writing below what is, for example, dog, you know, mm -hmm. she so she writes and then Kaye is like a booklet, you know, so she writes everything and with the pictures. It was, I thought, oh my gosh, I will learn now. But the problem, as I could not read, she would say, and then I was writing below in phonetic in Turkish how to read it. Because when she was gone, I could not read. What is it now? How do you read it? You know, I could not read it. And then she understood first, I need to learn to read. Why C is sometimes uh, like so sounding like a K and sometimes like a sh, you know, things like this. So I went to the first grade sometime and she arranged it that I could uh, learn reading. Okay. So of course uh, I am like 10 years and I go with the first grader and I, I feel like I'm such a stupid one. You know, I'm so <laughs> big and I'm with a little, little one, but I knew it's temporary and I need that. So I learned to read. Mm -hmm. And once I learned reading, you know, it was easier because I could read at least. Of course. And then, yeah, it took me two years to be like, uh, um, good at school, you know, like to catch up with the others. Mm. Uh, so, and after that, uh, I, I like, once I catch up, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, it was like, I could make friends. I felt, um, yeah, I mean, the, the thing with friendship also, uh, we were living in only immigrants, uh, uh, you know, more um, in the area where mostly immigrants were there. Mm -hmm. So my initial friends, they were like me, could not speak any word. And there was no Turkish, only Moroccans and the Portuguese. So their okay. French was, was better than me because a Moroccan, you know, they, at school they have this, they are bilingual. Mm -hmm. uh, Portuguese was like, they were like me, you know, could not really speak French, but they could, you know, it's a Latin language, it's easier for them. Right. So for two years, I mean, initially I didn't have any French friend because the school was like mostly foreigners anyway. Mm -hmm. We were like in ghettos, you know, only foreigners. And the French people were looking at us like, ooh, ooh you know, like, oh, foreigners, ooh. Uh, Arabs, and they didn't even know what is Turkish or Turkey, you know, they, they all call us Arabs. I'm not against Arabs, but mm. I was like saying, no, I'm not Arab, you know, I'm Turkish. And what is Turkish? You're Arabic. No, it's, it's Turkey, you know, it's different. <laughs> so what, what language are you talk, speaking? Turkish. It, does it exist? Yes, it does. <laughs> you know, things like this. So after two years, I, uh, I started to have friends, uh, which also French. Uh, and, but there was only few at school, so I had only few. And um, my friends were mostly like uh, Portuguese and uh, Arabs, you know, like Moroccan, Tunis, Tan Tunis, you know. Mm -hmm. And also, like, uh, I felt close because of the religion, also, you know, uh, like they they're, they're more understanding, like I don't eat, I will say, no, I don't eat pork and the French one could not understand why, mm -hmm. but the Moroccan could, or the 
from Algeria they could. So I felt like we have common things. You know? mm -hmm. And the Portuguese, they, they loved uh, eating pork. I mean, their home, like they are like big uh, ham hanging. <laughs> so I was like, oh no, I don't want to go to them. I was afraid to eat anything that, you know, you're a little girl and they told you don't eat pork, it's bad. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and so, uh, just to finish with this uh, transition, two years later, I felt more comfortable. School was going well. And till elementary, uh, end of elementary, I was living in an area where most immigrants were there. And uh, the school were not so good. Uh, um, the teacher were not the best, you know. And uh, they didn't really care because most of the kids would not even study. They would go learn a job and stuff like this. But my teacher saw something on me and a French, a French uh, the, the teacher which was teaching French, she, she really supported me and she made me read a lot of books uh, to have a read really good vocabulary and um, she would invite me to her house she was a single she was it was her first year and uh, you know she was really dedicated and when i moved to high school the high school was like uh, in uh, where i used to live in france there was no high school in this like uh, not so favorable area there was no high school so mm -hmm. i went to a good high school because my grades were good and uh, there, I, there was almost no foreigners, you know, it was like mostly French. Because- Do you remember what part of Paris that was and how you, had, how you went there? Uh, no, it was in Le Mans. Le Mans is like so 24 hours of Le Mans is well known with the race cars. And it's like 45 minutes from uh, Paris with uh, the train, the, the TGV. Uh, and the school I was going was called Washington, Lycée Washington. Okay. And so, yeah, after that, it was like, but you know, I, I lost you, no. Okay, I always wanted to go back to Turkey after graduation. Mm -hmm. uh, should I tell you uh, very quickly that initially I didn't even want to study. Should I say? You can tell me anything you want. It's all interesting to me. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, when I, my, my father was very uh, religious guy. And uh, yeah, it's interesting. And now when I look to myself, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not at all like my dad would have loved to see me. Uh, anyway, but it was a. Like, you wouldn't be good. the only one. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when I was like 12 years old, you know, after the first grade, you know, like five years, you have seven plus five, 12. So my, say, my dad said, in, in Turkey, it was like uh, mandatory to go to school five years. I don't know if you remember. So uh, like you can uh, learn reading and uh, writing and that's all, you don't need more. Now we change. Uh, so at this time was like five years mandatory. So after five, when I was 12, my, my dad said, so it's over, you don't need to go to school and uh, you don't need to study and uh, you know, you, you, will, you will marry and your husband has to look after you. I'm, I am 12 years old, I'm happy, okay. <laughs> I don't, my dad knows better, you know. Okay, daddy, <laughs> you know, I was not like, rebellious and I was not like oh no I want to go to school I was I, okay mm -hmm. um, I think it's part of my uh, personal I I don't have a lot of expectation from life and I don't have lot and I have a lot of acceptance mm -hmm. you know like uh, it's okay you know I'm not like no I want to do it I won't I, I would I, my, I say okay daddy I, I'm not going to school but in France, it was mandatory till 16 mm -hmm. to go to school. So they called us and we had the police coming home and they said, well, here she has to go to school. She's 12 years old. There is no way that she stay home. Mm -hmm. 
So I go to school and uh, uh, the first day of school after I went to school after a month. So I was a bit late, you know, because I, I was initially not going. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I am having, I, and I had the scarf because at 12, my, I decided I'm not studying. So I put a scarf and I'm home. I will learn what mom uh, is doing and I will be a good wife, you know. Okay. And I find it very, very normal for a 12 years girl. You know, your the the image. I mean, your model is your mom. Or it, it was my model anyway. Sure. So the the, the t then I had this teacher, the French. Uh, com we had to do composition. I don't know. Uh, is it mm -hmm. the same? Yeah. And uh, uh, so the question was, what do you want to become later? For 12 years old, you know, is a, and then I, I said, I wrote what I want, you know, what I want to, to be housewife, to be a mom, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I said, I want to learn to sew because I want to do things for my kids to help my husband that he doesn't, he does not need to buy everything because mom, that's what she was doing. She was, uh, making us dresses and you know mm. things like this so I was like exactly what mom is doing but I explained it so well that the teacher uh, gave me a really good uh, right. good uh, grade yes and uh, and she said can you stay and I would like to talk with you so everybody left and I had to stay I'm like, why? <laughs> I'm afraid, of course. You know, I thought she gave me a good grade. Maybe she doesn't believe it's me who prepared it. And I mean, nobody can help at home. Huh? I was the only one who can <laughs> who can read and write in French. So and then she Did said, "Your parents learn French too, by the way." No, no. Even now, uh, even after forty years, they could not speak French. They only lived between their community and. Mm -hmm. That was, um, yeah, that was the first generation of immigrants, you know. Mm -hmm. And they were afraid if they learn French and they become more integrated that they will lose something from their origin. Mm -hmm. So, and the teacher told me, why do you want to be a housewife? And, I, and then I said, I don't know. I want to be like mom. And she said, but maybe your mom did not have a chance to study. You can be a mom, you can, uh, but you can also have a career, you can have a job, you can, uh, don't you want to be, to do something? And uh, think about it. And I'm like, hmm, yeah, maybe you are, you are a smart girl. I love the way you write. I, she said, you did a good introduction, good development, good, good conclusion. And everything you, write, you wrote, uh, you know, feel, uh, is well explained. Mm -hmm. That's why I gave you a good grade, because you explain very well why you want to do. Mm -hmm. But I believe you have capacity to do something else, you know, and think about it. And then I was home and I'm like thinking, what could I do? And I thought maybe I should be um, a translator because I was like 12, but I was the translator of the whole Turkish community, taking the woman to the doctors. You know, I'm, I'm 12 years old. I go to the gynecologue with uh, ladies and I have to translate everything, you know, like mums, what is it? You know, I, many things I don't know. I'm like looking in a little dictionary to translate things. Then I thought, yeah, maybe I should be a translator and I can help all these Turkish people who cannot express themselves, correctly, who need help. And I was like filling all the documents because there was so much uh, like mail and uh, questions and documents to fill. And I was like doing this for all Turkish people. Yeah, you know, and I'm going to stop you for a second. It makes me uh, ponder that when you're asked something, you can only answer uh, based on what you know of life, right? Yeah. He's asking yeah, exactly. me this big uh, question and all you can really think of, all any one of us could think of yeah. is based on your life experience. 
exactly because you you know you think okay i am already doing this and i'm like sometimes struggling because i don't know the so you know translation is also something your brain needs to use used to it yeah because yeah. if i tell you table you, you you sometimes you know what it is you can explain oh you know it has four legs and, but you don't remember the word yeah masa masa you know things like this I remember sometimes we were saying things, I was like, oh, I, you know, when you do the babies and, you know, I was explaining it. So I thought, yeah, maybe translation. But anyway, you talked about translation. Yeah. And then I told mom, hey, mommy, you know, uh, today the teacher told me this and that. And she told, she said, yes, she's right. You know, I didn't have a chance to study, but you have this and you should not uh, you should not um, waste. Uh, yes, waste it. All. You should not, uh, not. You should not ignore it. You know. Okay. And uh, I say, yeah, but Dad doesn't want me to study. He said I can only go till sixteen, and if I only study till sixteen, why should I make so much effort to stop at sixteen? It doesn't even have a purpose. And, and then, you know, I thought about my brother. My brother was in Turkey. He did not come with us because he was going to college here in Turkey. Mm -hmm. And my dad thought, uh, if I will take him now, he will, he will be disturbed and he cannot continue. Mm -hmm. So I wrote him. I said, my dad doesn't want me to study, but the teacher said I have... I have a potential and I can do something else and I want to be a translator. You know? <laughs> mm. And I think I can do it well because I'm already helping people here and uh, especially the ladies because they don't want to go to the doctor with boys, you know, and uh, so I am a lady and I can, I, I organize an appointment for them, I take them and so, uh, but my, uh, but that, yeah, and my brother, he said, he didn't say anything to me. He wrote to my dad. Oh. Yeah, he said, uh, it's not, uh, yeah. now times are, uh, times are changed. Girls uh, need to, uh, to be educated, they need to be independent, mm -hmm. and you should give a chance to Sylvia. If she can study, she should give, give her a chance should give her a chance um, if she cannot succeed okay but if she can mm -hmm. should give her a chance. so and then you know like i mean my dad my dad was a sweetheart and loved him so much and he was never and if i if i had told him initially i want to study he would have let me but i'm a little girl you know how can i know if i need to study or not so i i'm not like, okay i accept and he is like he's happy to then he called me he made me sit. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's something serious. I need to sit in front of him. And he said, so my little princess wants to study? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> and the teacher says, I have potential. And he said, I believe you have. You are a very smart girl. And if you want to study, then do it. Mm -hmm. And green light and I was like oh, why, why did I not tell him in the first place you know? so with this encouragement and with this motivation I, I become a very good student I mean not very good but I was I studied well mm -hmm. and um, of course this time my uh, my uh, vision also changed. I thought, should I be a translator or not? But uh, my first year at college, I went uh, for, I, I study Spanish and English and in the, to, be a, to be a translator, you know, like French English translation. And later I thought, well, maybe it's limited. I should learn this language, okay, but I should add something else to it. Then I decided to add economics. And so I could speak English, Spanish, and I had like economics, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was graduated from, uh, in fact, it was not really economics, it was administration, economic, and social. So the social part is a bit your, your thing. 
we start we had like a sociology you know why why societies act in a, in a ways and how um, advertisement of culture can um, affect uh, the social life and uh, so I loved it and and Freud and psychology and human and woman and, and I loved it and so oh, maybe I should have studied psychology then you know because I was uh, and the, my and the teacher loved me because I was speaking a lot and I like uh, participating a lot in the class and economics I liked it too because you know, it's part of life, economics. And I was always also very talkative uh, about uh, economics. And I was always saying, you know, when we studied, we studied uh, Marxism, Leninism and stuff like that, I was always so vocal about my opinions. So I am there 25 years old, just graduated from, from um, university. Mm -hmm. And so at high school, suddenly my social environment changed a lot at high school. S suddenly I had only French around me. No more Moroccan, no more, no, there was no Turks anywhere because we are like few, uh, like 20 family mm -hmm. and uh, no, no girl study. Oh, yeah. Okay. Another thing I have to tell you. So we were coming from Adapazari, which was like a bit developed compared to cars, Erzurum, you know, mm -hmm. Konya. So people coming from this region, all the girls, they, at 16, they stopped school. Mm -hmm. They got married at 17, you know. Mm -hmm. Nobody studied. And the one who stopped at 16, they didn't really like they were always uh, like absent and not really studying you know uh, for, and at six, 16 they are gone 17 they are married also the boys because the parents were so afraid that they they go and marry a french one very conservative a small uh, community very conservative very different from us you know the, because the immigrants port um, the profile it was so different so was this a concern uh, in your family that you would marry want to marry a frenchman and no <laughs> it was not i mean um so i first i was the only girl not married at uh, 22 you know not married at 22 i was like old old girl you know like oh my gosh why so what is uh, well, we would always say, what, so why, what is your expectation from life? What is it? You study 22, you are not married, you have no kids. Because everybody had already kids at 22, married uh, since uh, 17 years old or 18 years old, you know. So I was like exception among Turks. So one question I have, so you would get these questions when you traveled back home for vacations primarily or within the no. house? Uh, no, uh, no, in uh, within the Turkish community in France. Uh -huh. okay. yeah. In Turkey, it was different because meanwhile, we moved to Bursa. It was a big city and uh, Bursa, all girls of my age were studying, you know, it was so different mm -hmm. because uh, Bursa was a big city. All people, all the Turkish people in France were from countryside, you know, coming from is very far they have never seen a toilet in the house you know they were like so different for them for us it was looking because other we had the house we had the bathroom in the house it was a bit different yeah so uh, when i was in the high school so i had all these french um, friends and they were like well it, from a better um, social uh, standard, you know, mm -hmm. because where I, the immigrants were like on the low, low end of the mm -hmm. um, financial yeah. means. You know? mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and uh, but you know, I was, uh, we would ask me, where are you living? And when I, the area, if I say the name of the area, oh, you know, but I was never 
ashamed of, of yeah i am from i'm immigrant i came and i was proud to say you know yeah well, it was not easy i came when i was 10 we are still living there yes mm -hmm. because it was like a location with crimes and migrants uh, you know like bad area oh, you are from there you know yes i'm from there and um, I, i was i was never ashamed of my past or my uh, roots uh, so i am 25 years old i am graduate I'm a graduate student and I go to look for a job and then I arrived to this uh, there was an office for uh, graduation and there was like two office one for a bachelor degree and one for like low educated or no no degree people so I go to the bachelor one and the guy said no 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 you are in the wrong line you should go next door you know? uh, no I'm not in the wrong Now here is only bachelor and up. Yes, I know, but I am bachelor. You are, you know. I was like, I, I made me so angry. To, to look at people like judging from the look because now I am blonde. Of course, it's fake, huh? because I'm getting so old. I have white hair, but I, I was like real, real Turkish with black hair and you know black eyes. The guy look at me, and from my physical appearance, he thinks oh, she could not have studied, so she is not in the uh, in the right lane. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, so I, um, yeah, I mean, I I had racism uh, also at this point uh, for looking a job, as I French were like very uh, conservative and. Uh, I initially look and there was an open position in a bank and the guy said, the, the one who did the interview said, well, you are too um, typical and, you know, for our customer is not so appropriate to have somebody like you. Like, What do you mean? Like, I'm too typical. Yeah, you, you don't speak French. I said, yeah, I'm not French. Yeah, that's a problem. I said, well you need somebody who work or you need somebody who looks like french you know so if i was a turkish person with a blue eyes was okay mm. but because i had black eyes was not so okay so they did he he said and the girl who did the first interview she liked me a lot mm. so but the boss like yeah well you know she's too too, too, mm. too you know but then they, they selected a, a boy a french one Uh, and this guy uh, at, the, at, uh, at the last minute uh, didn't want to come to work. Mm -hmm. So they had no choice and calling me. Mm -hmm. So initially they made me so angry. I wanted to say, you know what? I don't want, you know, but I needed the job. Mm -hmm. I needed it, you know, I needed the experience. And I thought, well, take it, take it because you will not have a second chance maybe. Mm -hmm. take it get some experience and then you can find a better place so i'm working in this uh, in the bank credit agricole and uh, so in the credit department but they, uh, the boss told me stay in the back office don't show you your you know don't show in the... oh wow so the discrimination continued in the job place workplace yeah he say that but but in the office everybody loved me so much And I was like mostly doing uh, the files and answering the phones. And, uh, but they, you know, on the phone, I was nice and people appreciate me a lot. Uh, and then, you know, I don't know, they think I'm French from the phone. Then they see me and, oh, I thought, you, so you are an Arab? No, uh, but yes, I'm a foreigner, you know. <laughs> I was like shocked. Like, if you are Arab, you cannot talk nicely on the phone, you know, like, Or you cannot have a good vocabulary or good French. Yeah, no, I'm mean, like a bit disappointed when they saw my physical appearance. But somehow I um, I won the heart of everybody. I mean, not everybody was racist. I mean, it was this this boss was, and he felt so. I made I made it. I worked so well that he should be ashamed. You know. Mm -hmm. I mean, my motivation was to make him ashamed of his reaction. Mm -hmm. And I was successful because at the end of my, uh, uh, because I, it was just a replacement for a pregnant woman who was going on, 
on um, apparently on a pregnancy leave, mm -hmm. but for a year, you know. So after a year, the woman came, but they didn't want to let me go. They wanted to keep me. Uh, but uh, then I thought, okay, then I go. I uh, I was so happy that I made it, you know, change their mind, uh, the judgment, and so I said, okay, let me go to Turkey and have some vacation, and then I will come back. Okay. For because then you cannot have vacation once you start working. Then I went to Turkey with the intention to come back to France, mm -hmm. and there I found the job you know i found uh, i mean that's my return um, the reason why i returned back to turkey i always wanted to go back to turkey somehow because i told you, you know from, from my childhood i had mm -hmm. such a good uh, memories and each time i was in turkey i felt like i am uh, i am not a foreigner you know i'm, I'm really from there uh, like um, that you belong Yes, exactly. And um, so I am in Turkey, and you know, it's like I believe in destiny. I was there just for two weeks. I had my ticket, and I was uh, help. My brother had a little uh, shop, and we I wanted to have fifteen minutes left just to let you know. Okay, so okay, I'm back in Turkey, and I'm like cleaning this window with a newspaper, and uh, in the newspaper I saw an ad which say looking for somebody who speak French and, uh, and English and uh, it was Valio, the French company. And I thought, oh my gosh, they are looking for me. I, we called and uh, they said, okay. I went there and I started working. And we, it was Friday and Monday I started to work for Valio. Everything yeah, should get cut short. <laughs> yeah. Then uh, I started with Valeo and that how my I returned back to Turkey and from there I went to Bosch. I started in logistic and up as a HR manager at Bosch. And uh, in between I married a Turkish guy, but I think it was meant that I marry a foreigner. <laughs> I lived in France for 15 years, never had a boyfriend, a French boyfriend, because I wanted to be a good girl for my family, that uh, show them I have no boyfriend like this, you know, I'm focused on my studies and then work, and one day I will meet a guy, a Turkish one, of course, and I will marry, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I'm in Turkey, I met this guy, Turkish guy, uh, after five meetings not flirting i'm just saying like meet seriously you know somebody introduces i he is serious yeah i'm serious like you know we want it's like blind date kind mm -hmm. and um and then i married uh, after 10 years uh, i divorced and then after three years here i am with a german <laughs> How did you meet your German husband? And then we want to yeah. make sure we get the story of how you came to the United States. And a lot yes, of exactly. And that's I like this here for you as well. Yeah, so I met uh, my husband through job, you know, he was working for Bosch. I was working for Bosch too. Uh, he was uh, working in, uh, in Germany. He was, of course, much higher than me. I was just, uh, you know, just a manager and he was like a kind of um, three, four levels up. So he came uh, to work, uh, he came for a meeting and then he saw me and he fell in love, you know. <laughs> no, really, it was him first because I couldn't, I didn't even remember him when he told me I met, we met once, really, I don't remember. <laughs> Because first I didn't want a German, uh, I was not interested in marrying anyway, I, did, I started in not a German because I thought my father would not ac would never accept it and you know I told you I loved my father, we had a really good connection. Lot of argues uh, but uh, a lot of love you know because he would always tell me yeah you will you have to read the Quran, you have to, you know, things like this. And I was, I would like, uh, um, 
talk a lot about religion, but in a philosophical way, you know, so my approach for, to the religion was different. And I was like, uh, I was asking questions, he had difficulties to answer my dad. So I was, like, <laughs> <laughs> I was challenging him a lot. Yeah. And he loved this because then you interact, you know, you talk. Sure. So I thought he would Plus never. Didn't accept. speak German. It was the one language you didn't speak. No, no German. And I never liked Germans because French don't like. They don't like German, you know, because of the war. And also German language, I never liked. I thought, oh, it's you know, like compared to French, it's like German. No, German people, no, you know, so uh, yeah, was, their own prejudices about people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we all have some prejudice. But I saw this guy and he looked like uh, very, very Turkish. <laughs> the reason why I liked him was because he, he didn't look like German. Uh -huh. <laughs> like a typical German, like, you know, also physically, he was different and also emotionally, like very um, social. He loves to welcome people. He's, um, you know, I sometimes wonder if he had some kind of Turkish blood in him, you know. Uh, he's like jealous and, you know, like a man, like Turkish man or kind. Of, I always call him Pasha, you know. <laughs> a little bit patriotic. Yeah, exactly. And so that's how we met. And, uh, he, you know, he was a smart guy because he, I was in France and he came to France and uh, he and I was like so afraid I cannot introduce him to my parents I, it was there was nothing between us anyway but I told him no no we cannot even have a, any kind of relation because um, I cannot marry a German I cannot have an affair you know I mean a uh, relation because uh, that's how it is uh, I am 40 years old I cannot do things like this I said and then he came and you know, I don't want to have uh, uh, something with a man which I know I will not marry. So I have a child, and you know, I was like very serious. And and he came to France, and he asked from your first husband then. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then uh, he came to France, and he, he and I, 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 mom said, I say he's here. He's he's crazy. This man. I what? What are we going to say to my dad? She said, well, you say he's a, he's a colleague, you know, which was true, in fact. But he came and then he went and with his few French and the few French of my dad, he asked my hand. He want to have first his approval, you know, because I said it will, it's not possible. And I, he was smart. And my dad looked at me and he said, this man, he really loves you. Mm. I said, you deserve it. Uh, he will make you happy if you agree. I, I will not be against. He said. And um, yeah, and then yeah, surprise! My dad uh, was like second time surprising me. <laughs> and you hadn't really dated or knew him well at that time then. No, no, we were not dating at all. You know, we were like he approached me, like you know, he wanted to take me on a date and I say no I don't want because you are German uh, you are not Muslim and uh, my parents are very religious uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to have my I don't want my father to have a heart attack if I tell him you know now I, I'm marrying a German you know like, like I'm not acceptable mm -hmm. and uh, so he thought maybe first I need to make sure the parents are in agreement and then I can win her heart you know so I want to ask you all about your marriage and more details, but we have uh, 10 minutes left. So yeah, um, then, um, our American viewers especially, I want to uh, have you speak a little bit to what ended up bringing you here and uh, how your transition was to this country and how yeah, your happiness is. is now living in Michigan. Yeah, I mean, uh, First of all, um, yeah, we, I, mar I mean, I never wanted to go to US mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure. I loved, I was very happy in Turkey, mm -hmm. uh, even after divorcing, you know, I, I had a very good life. Uh, I was making good money, I had a good 
big house and you know helpers are cheaper so I, I, I had a lot of friends and uh, my brother, my sister were around me. And uh, so I, we married very quickly with my, uh, like I said, you know, my parents, I cannot, I'm dating this guy, I'm dating, I'm dating, I cannot, you know. Mm -hmm. If you, he ask, if they say, okay, then he asked me and I say, okay, so we married without dating, you know, somehow. <laughs> and of course on the phone, etc. but uh yeah it was like you you marry or you don't you, you don't date you know There's that you cannot just i'm dating i will see you know i cannot say that not with my family i didn't want to to do that you know at 40 i didn't want them to say what is she doing she she was such a you know like a, a obeying girl to the turkish rules or, or to our family mm. rules you know? So we married, and I don't regret. You know, it was um, a good decision so far after 16 years. And so um, initially, he wanted to take me to Germany, which I didn't want mm -hmm. uh, because uh, my son was uh, like 10 years old, uh, uh, nine years old, uh, maybe nine, nine years old. And uh, I thought, I don't want him to experience what I experienced, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So difficult with a German, I said, no, no, I, no way that I go. So he tried to come to Turkey to find a job in Turkey. It was not possible that finally he had this job in, and I tried to have a job in Germany initially, uh, but then, you know, this, my son is, uh, no, I don't do that, not to my son. Uh, so we forgot about this option and it was only he, he can come to Turkey or, or we are like commuting. So for three years he lived like commuting from, he was in Germany, I was in Turkey, it was, it was easy, you know, Germany is not so far okay. and he could work from home and I could work from home sometime. So sometime I was going to Germany, sometime he was coming, was 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 manageable. And uh, then he had a position in US and uh, I was completely against <laughs> the US. I said, okay, only if, if I have a job, you know, because from Germany I knew we cannot manage this. And uh, he said, okay, he, he, uh, we look for it. And he accepted the position because he always loved the idea of living in US because he was, with his first wife, he lived already five years in in US, in Michigan, you know, huh. Bush, Michigan. So he had a really good uh, memories from US, you know, it's like easy, big roads, and I don't know, he likes the American life. I don't know why, because he is <laughs> not exactly, the way he is, he is like, he loves to go to cafes. I, I would see him more in France, you know, Germany, cafes and cake eating there and our beer garden the us is not exactly like this anyway he loved it and he accept and he accepted and i said okay i will only come if i have a job after a year i didn't have any job because because of his position i have i had no chance to work for bosch you know you could not it's like uh, by uh, by by principle it was not uh, possible okay. because of his position you know mm -hmm. uh, like uh, what did they call it um, conflict of interest okay so they try kind of I don't know if it was true but they tried to uh, send my CV to other company through Bosch you know mm -hmm. uh, so I didn't find and after a year my husband said look we cannot go on like this Mm -hmm. either you come here or we divorce you know mm -hmm. then i saw and my I son was like by this time 13 years old my son was like uh it was starting high school 14. 14. Okay. then i thought maybe it's a good time he can start start a high school in us mm -hmm. uh you know and he had a bit and, and the unfortunate thing was like my son I wanted him to learn French because I thought one day I will send him to France to study college there, you know? So he had no English, a poor one. He had the same experience as I had. Uh, 
So when he said, when I, we, decide, um, we had this decision to go to, to US, then I, he had some English classes, but that's all, you know? Mm -hmm. So he, went, he had almost the same experience, like the history well, started with quite a bit of a difference with the mom who actually understood what that was like. And that I imagine yes. made a big difference. Of course, we had a lot of support, you know, tutors and me speaking English. Mm -hmm. So uh, after a year, we, I moved to US. With, so we're where, where at the time. So think about what you want to say about um, what most stands out to you from living here after all the places you've been, all the adventures you've had? What stands yeah. out to you from your life here? Yeah, I mean, U.S. is easy to live. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's difficult to judge because now I, I was like more mature. I, uh, I had like international experience. You know, while, while I was working as HR, I traveled all the European countries and I had, uh, so, and I was speaking English. I arrived the next day, I went to the, uh, to do all the paperwork, you know, I knew everything. So I was working also with uh, Americans sometime, you know, so I was used to the in, uh, American English too. So the next day I was shopping, I was uh, secretary of state for my driver license and I, I did not need any support. So it was so easy and the roads were big and large and uh, uh, so it was easy. And I didn't, it was different from France because in France I was living in a, a ghetto with only for, uh, foreigners and immigrants you know like low uh, level in the social and the social level very low so we, uh, people would look at you different i arrived to us and uh, so i'm living in a nice area we are well educated you know it's different already i'm more confident i'm so for my son was somehow somehow hard you know despite my support of course, he didn't experience everything I experienced, but it was hard for him. Still a big adjustment, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at 14, he has no friend. He arrives, he doesn't speak English. I mean, despite the support, it's not easy. Of course. He's not an outgoing guy on top, you know, so it was not... He, he was angry initially. He was like, why did you do this to me? He was, he was like, you know, yeah. It was How not long easy, did it but... take him to adjust? Sorry? How long did it take him to adjust? I don't know if he ever adjusted. <laughs> Somehow you get used to it. Uh, for example, still now he has no American friend, American, you know, between parentheses. Um, yeah, like when he was at school, he was like me. He had Italian friend, Chinese, Japanese, whatever, or like... Uh, expat kids like uh, us because initially we were we intended to be in Michigan only for three years and How you know many years are you here now? Ten. 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 Yeah. So maybe we can finish um, on this note now that you've been living in Michigan in the U.S. for 10 years um, yeah. something that you can think of that might interest our American viewers who want to who are you know, willing to listen to our conversation and are interested in what we have to say, what would you yeah. want to share with them from yourself? <laughs> I don't know what I would want to share. Well, I think um, for, um, for everybody who moves from one place to the other is always difficult. But I like in the um, US, uh, I felt welcome, you know. Americans are more uh, friendly. Um, they look more friendly at least, you know. And they are more smiling and they are... Um, so initially it made me feel uh, welcome and uh, the first two years, I didn't know any Turkish people in Michigan. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so in this, maybe it's because uh, everybody is from another country somehow, you know, it's not the same like in France or Germany where they are like uh, Francais de souche, like they are real French. Mm -hmm. So maybe it, it made easy the integration and, um, but yeah, what I, what I always miss, uh, despite the fact that I had difficulties in France, but I am still miss the European life because it has a lot of culture and like this. Um, now, I, when I come to Europe and to Turkey, I find it very crowded, you know, especially in big cities because in Michigan, it's not really, we don't really, we live in suburbs, so it's different. But I miss this, uh, the cultural part or the, the outside the life, um, like in, in Chicago, so you know, like more lively. Sometimes I want to go to to the city and has this, uh, yeah. Well, but would you say then your life in some way um, didn't return fully, but now resembles a little bit more your original childhood in that you are more connected to nature, you have more space, yes, you have yes, more freedom. Exactly. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, first you have space, which I like, space. Um, because in Turkey, in the, uh, when uh, before moving to US, I also had a like, nice garden and house, and uh, I was contemplating having a dog and stuff like this. So in, in, when we arrived to US, <laughs> we had the dog initially, but then so we now, were traveling. Now, do you have those things? No, yeah, I mean, uh, we had a dog, but then we are traveling a lot. It didn't work well. But I mean, and I, I love gardening. I love flowers and I love the calm. The, uh, of course, it's not exactly the, uh, the countryside, but still, yes, uh, it's much better than my experience in France, of course. You know, it's also because financially it's different also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I believe in U.S. Uh, the immigrants have also, uh, especially the, the one who comes because of need, uh, it's not easy their life. You know, I, we arrived there in U.S. with an expat uh, contract, you know, everything was taken in charge and was so easy. It didn't need to, then we had like, uh, for anything we had support and I did not need, but for example, you could have like language classes for free for your for yourself, like integration classes and many things which did not exist uh, in France. Now maybe I don't know. At my time, it didn't. So, so one last yeah, question, we, and I'm aware we're already a little over time. Um, what is your next now that you're living here and? Um, at this stage of your life, you really don't have as many restrictions. Do you have a next, something you would want to make use of, something you would want to learn? Because you're somebody who always enjoys growing and learning. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> well, it's funny, I don't really want to say this to, to, to you because <laughs> a cycle. but I am very I for a while I wanted to study psychology like because um, like I initially thought thought in, in, in at the university I said oh maybe I should just do social studies or uh, psychology because I love it and I I can bring something I can help you know I love helping mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, human resources, I loved it because I could, uh, you know, also help a lot. You know, when you um, in the career, the career path of people to hire the right person, to be a coach for their career, etc. I think I I love the idea of helping and supporting. And I, I for a while I was thinking, should I go back to school and? Uh, I learned this uh, like um, really, you know, not just from reading here and there, but like, and I took some classes, um, uh, you know, at OCC, for example. Yeah, well, I think if you want, you can always educate yourself. 
and uh, I love uh, I love reading reading like uh, not just like novels you know but like uh, reading things uh, about minds about um, uh, like I said sociology politics and uh, so people, you don't necessarily have to go to school or have to even have a job I mean there's so many different ways to yeah reach out and help people yeah for example you know i am when uh, still now i have all the workers reaching out to me to find a job or for their kids and uh, i like to support uh, people who are in need you know not only not only financially but like um, coaching them uh, preparing them for interviews you know, uh, telling them what not to do, what to do. And I love things like this. And uh, if I, I wish, I wish, uh, if, I don't know, in, in, France, in US, I'm not sure about it. But I, if I was in Turkey, I think I would uh, take somebody uh, like a child and um, be, uh, how do they call it? In, you know, support the child, I mean, like, um, Mm. So not fostering, but financially supporting no, for, yeah, no, no, education. For, 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 what did you say? Yeah, exactly. I would like this. Um, I, you know, you cannot change the world. You cannot help everybody. Mm -hmm. But if you can help one, then you know, then you can. You should help this one. So well, that's a good one to end on. I like that idea. Silvia, yeah. so, thank you so much for your time. Uh, maybe thank one you. more question. We always go over. We always go over time in Turkey, anyway. Uh, I have one more question. Is there something I didn't ask you that you would like to uh, let our viewers know of you? Yes, I mean, maybe I should say something about uh, happiness in general, you know. Um, I, I told you that it was very difficult in France, uh, but I always, somehow maybe it's because of the, the way I am, I mean, uh, I don't think it's always related with education, uh, but I always find a way to be happy. Mm -hmm. Like uh, in France, I was uh, you know, struggling with the language, etc. But then I made a connection with a teacher. You know, she was my my first uh, friend was this Yugoslavian teacher. It was everything for me. I found, and I thought, oh, I'm happy I'm here because then I could not have better. Mm -hmm. you know? And when she left, I cried. It was like so emotional. And. Um, for example, you know, every we all have a life is not always easy. We all have struggles. I lost my brother with, with whom I was very close. Uh, but you know, while I was suffering and I had a lot of pain, then I thought that you are lucky because look, you have no regrets. You had such a good relation with your brother that uh, you know, it's a luck also, you know, it's, not everybody has this chance. Mm -hmm. I think in life we should do things we should not regret afterwards. So when I left my job in Turkey to move to to U.S., I wrote, uh, you know, people write uh, like goodbye things, long explanation and feelings. I just write, I just wrote, uh, while I'm living, I only have love in my heart. I hope uh, you also will look, uh, will remember me with love. You know that. You know I was, I was not angry with anybody. I, I was so sure I didn't hurt anybody intentionally, mm -hmm. and that made me uh, peaceful. And uh, and when I left, you know the whole um, plant were like. Um, like crying, you know, like um, big goodbye behind me there. And it uh, was really emotional. And I I left and I thought, yes, I'm living with a lot of love behind me. And uh, still today, I'm not uh, forgotten. 
So I, yeah, and uh, I think this is a wonderful uh, thing for everybody to consider that happiness maybe is not dependent on circumstances, what's going on outside of us, especially yes. during these days, because we're all having a hard time with the pandemic and everything else that's going on in the world. So it's good to be reminded should be thank you for reminding us that maybe happiness is a choice after all yes exactly that was the right word i always you know exactly you know sibel when i sometimes i have to go to a uh, you know my husband has a lot of events which i don't really want to go you know like obligation then i look to the mirror and i say Sibel, you have two choices you have to go there and enjoy, or you, are, you, are, you get bored and decide not to be happy. So I always choose to be happy. Let's, let's choose happiness. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Thank you, my dear. Thank you, too. Bye. Bye.